So hey, it's Jordan, Ancient Literature Dude, and we're going to be doing something fun today. I'm embarking on my first Q&A. Never gotten the chance to do one before. Always thought it looked kind of fun, and now I'm getting my chance because all of you sent me some really great questions on Twitter and YouTube, and I'm going to do my best to answer them and have some fun and be a good sport about it. And without any further ado, I'm just going to jump into it. So the first question was from Twitter, from Renee the Laughing Duck, who asked, my question is, why are you so awesome? And uh, I first have to say that I did not solicit this question in any way. Uh, this wasn't a, a paid announcement. Uh, and I'm not making this up. But in all seriousness, uh, I, I have to somewhat disagree with the premise of the question. I don't necessarily think that I'm awesome in any way. Uh, I think that if I have any appeal, it's probably because I'm relatively genuine and I have unusual interest and I'm willing to make fun of myself and be a bit of a goofball, which is about all I can do. It's the best that I can do. The next one is from hyper powerful form. My good friend power on Twitter who asks, have you ever watched over the garden wall? I think you might like it quite a bit. And I have not, I haven't actually even heard of this series. I had to look it up. I thought it was kind of cool that Elijah Wood did some of the uh, voice acting for it. It surprised me that I haven't heard of it, but no, I haven't seen it. Unfortunately, it looks like my kind of thing. It looks like it would be right up my alley with the kind of fantasy setting and just the, the setting of a forest and things like that with the two brothers, if I'm not mistaken, looks pretty cool. I'll have to check it out. So thanks for that recommendation. Uh, next we have one from my good friend Nisha on Twitter who asks, what was the first language you learned and what inspired you to learn so many? which is a really great one. Uh, the first one, of course, outside of my native language, English, that I started to learn was Old Norse. And as I've talked about in a previous video, I did that because I'm very fascinated by Norse mythology and culture, and I wanted to learn more about it. But I started doing that in late high school, and then I quickly got into college and started taking Latin and found that I didn't have enough time to really continue with Norse the way that I wanted to. So I just went with Latin until I had graduated and then got back to Norse and others. Um, and so as for the question of what inspired me to learn so many, I got kind of addicted. Uh, once I learned Latin and then came back to Norse, I wanted to pick up Greek to more fully understand the New Testament and other Greek literature, of course. And I can't even remember what came after that, but Middle Welsh or whatever, I think because of my kind of Tolkien interest, Tolkien was a big influence. My just sort of perennial fascination with fantasy and mythology, I think for me, a knowledge of the associated languages is very important to really getting a close understanding of those things. Uh, so the next question comes from my beautiful girlfriend, Liv Nod, who asks in another kind of a leading question, how are you so charming? And uh, I love you, baby. Thank you for that. You, you know, I really appreciate this. Uh, and you also know that, uh, you know, I'm not a really good person to answer questions like that because I don't think very highly of myself. I invited you to be on the video and answer this for me, but alas, you are asleep right now. So I have no one to blame but myself for not being able to answer this very well. But uh, again, I don't think that I'm very charming, but I think that I can be relatively easy to be around despite the fact that I'm shy and maybe a little bit intense sometimes in person, but I'm also relatively easygoing and not very judgmental. So I guess I have that going for me. Uh, the next question is from my Twitter friend and fellow Swanee Trejo fanatic, Charles Sager, who asks, what inspired you to become so invested in literature? And, uh, I've sort of talked about this in previous videos. But uh, I read a bit as a kid. I started off with comic books, Ninja Turtles, and things like that. I loved movies, you know, the, the 80s stuff and the era that I grew up with. And I got really invested in fantasy and science fiction and horror. just sort of found them interesting. Later got into gaming, specifically more storytelling forms of gaming like Final Fantasy. And that was a big influence. Um, I don't know. I was a quiet kid. Uh, I was lonely. I spent a lot of time alone and I didn't have a lot of friends and, uh, reading books was a good way for me to, 
uh, feel like I was a part of something larger and like my life had some kind of a meaning. And uh, I later became a writer, of course, uh, because of my love of, of literature and specifically fiction and poetry. And it's just been a thing that's been important in my life. Uh, it's it's a really fascinating question because that's it's you know it's one of those questions that's, that's hard to explain. It's just part of my makeup as a person. But uh, anyway, the next question is from Tamaki on Twitter, who asks a really good one here: What three books influenced your expression of thought the most, or which ones do you often think about the most in your daily life or lately? And again, a really good one, also a really tough one to answer. Uh, I, I would say, just for for brevity's sake. That if I had to pin it down to works of fiction and individual works, so sort of taking out books of poetry and things like that, I would say, uh, first of all, The Lord of the Rings, without a doubt. Uh, at one time, it was my favorite book of all time, and it's continued to influence me tremendously. The Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe, which... I came to later in life, but which I found arguably to be a greater influence on me in my adult life. Uh, as much as I love the Lord of the Rings, I think that the book of the new sun and Gene Wolfe as an author, uh, pose more profound questions, more existential questions. Uh, I love the Lord of the Rings for its mythological and linguistic and general storytelling grandeur but the book of the new sun is to me a more exquisite product of fiction uh both from a structural standpoint and from a philosophical one and i find it endlessly fascinating and i can reread it endlessly and learn something new from it every time and for the third book although it's not a, a novel and not a particularly long book but rather a relatively short historical work i would have to say uh, the Germania by Tacitus, the Roman historian, his writing style and way of thinking have been hugely influential on me in a kind of a weird, indirect way. Uh, I often cite him as a direct influence on my, my writing and my thinking, and I'm a huge fan. So uh, I think those three would be a pretty good indicator of kind of where, where my thoughts are on, on writing. All right, so this is a good one. From Poppy's Mom on Twitter. What is the meaning of life? Your take. And, okay, y'all aren't giving me softballs here, but it's fascinating. Uh, first of all, I'd say I'm generally existentialist. Uh, I'm not particularly religious, although I'm vaguely spiritual. I somewhat jokingly say that I am a Gnostic agnostic, and I'm not entirely kidding by that. And what I mean is that uh, I don't know what our place is in the world. I only have my, my own vague beliefs about it. Uh, but with my fascination in Gnosticism, I do believe that we all have a kind of an innate drive in life or a purpose in life. It may not be divinely inspired or divinely placed, but I think that it's there. Uh, we, we all, I believe have the ability to find something that we find meaningful in life and impart meaning to life in the pursuit of that thing, whether it be in the form of another person through love or in the pursuit of our hobbies and interests or our work, whatever the case may be, I think we all have an innate spark within us that pushes us to pursue something that we find missing in ourselves and which we desire. All right. So the next question also from Poppy's mom is a little bit easier to answer. Buster Keaton, Charlie Chaplin, or Harold Lloyd. And, uh, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to give a great answer to this because I'm not nearly as familiar with silent film as I should be. I'm sorry to say, uh, in fact, I think that the only silent film I've ever seen was Nosferatu, which I really enjoyed and thought was very powerful and atmospheric, but I'm just not someone who really actively pursues uh, silent film and so again not really familiar with the subject material here but from what little I've seen of each of these gentlemen I would say Charlie Chaplin I, I always thought his his appearance alone was pretty funny 
And uh, so I got to go with him. Okay, so the next question is from my Twitter friend, Emmy Everlove, who is also a great streamer whom you should check out. And it's a good question. What got you into gaming? And uh, I told you that I had a good story for this, and I do. Uh, I was very young. I grew up in the 80s, uh, sort of in the NES era. And I missed Atari, although I think that we had a Commodore 64, but we didn't know how to operate it. We weren't very tech savvy. Uh, but uh, as I said, I grew up in the NES era, and my sister Monica rented an NES and uh, was bowled over by it. Told my dad about it. He promptly went out to the local uh, video store, Videorama, which I remember very fondly to this day, and rented the console and Super Mario Bros. 2 and one other game that I don't remember. But we didn't really spend any time playing it. We, we did Super Mario Bros. 2, and I loved it. And I still have a soft spot for the game to this day, even though a lot of people don't care for it for various reasons. But, uh, yeah, um... We played the heck out of it, uh, my my dad and my sister Kate and I, and uh, my dad and I in particular uh, stuck with the game, and even after we had later bought a console uh, for ourselves, or rather he bought it for us, uh, but we stuck with the game and eventually were able to beat it, which was a cause of great celebration in the household, and that's kind of how it all got started. I just, I you know, I got, I got addicted to it pretty early. 